what is layer normalization let's see normalization is the process of bringing the inputs to a common scale in the case of deep neural networks in the learning process when we are updating weights of a layer it might impact the inputs of subsequent layers because the activations of that layer are impacted and hence the inputs to subsequent layers and more importantly there could be a change in the distribution of inputs to subsequent layers and this is called the internal covariate shift now normalization is one of the techniques used to mitigate the effect of internal covariate shift so because of internal covariate shift there could be a challenge in terms of how fast our learning algorithm converges and also there is the aspect of sensitivity to weight initialization normalization also helps with this process now layer normalization is one form of normalization so how do we compute layer norm so in a layer norm we look at all the activations in a particular layer for a specific instance and normalize across them so when we say normalize we first compute the mean and then we compute the standard deviation and then we subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation to get the layer uh, to apply the layer norm so now what is the difference between the layer norm and the batch norm so last uh, in the last video we also looked at batch norm in batch norm what we do is let's look at if we look at the activations in a particular layer for each dimension in that activation we take that dimension across different instances in the batch and normalize across that so this is done uh, at a dimension level for different instances in the batch whereas the layer norm is done for a single instance for different activations within the layer so there's a difference in the way these two are applied now why do we need like you know uh, why do we have two different types of norms so the batch norm is very popularly used in uh, like you know cnns and the basic feed forward networks but uh, if we look at more recent uh, nlp based uh, applications which have used transformer based models it's more common to use the layer norm that's because layer norm is more popular with sequence models so let's say we have an rnn so here is a picture of an rnn that you see here and what we see is the inputs have a temporal dependence so each input each instance is related to the previous instance so if we try to normalize across instances it might change the properties of the input and that's probably you know not as nice which is why we want to do something that's you know within an instance and not across instances and that was one of the motivations for layer norm so layer norm is used where there are temporal dependencies because it's done at an instance level within a layer and there is also the issue of varying sequence length for uh, rnn use cases especially when you look at nlp applications right and uh, in these situations again layer norm is better than batch norm and then the finally there is no dependence on batch size so sometimes we can have like you know mini batches which are like really small in which case it does not make sense to actually do the batch norm because we do not have enough examples to compute the statistic on and layer norm might make more sense so in those situations it's uh, preferable to use layer norm over batch norm so now we saw why we use layer norm uh, and compared it with batch norm as well and how the layer norm is computed now we can use layer norm uh, pretty easily in our code as we know so let's look at a very simple kiras example and as you can see here when you're actually trying to do this small lstm model uh you it basically it's loaded some imdb data set for sentiment and what we are doing here is uh you know making a small lstm model and you can actually add a layer normalization operation like this now layer normalization operation has several parameters you can uh select the it also has you know like similar to the batch norm you also have uh the beta and the gamma parameters which can be learned so once you normalize you can also like you know multi you typically multiply it with a gamma and add a beta so you do that uh scaling uh and translation operation uh in order to um 
in order to have some control on how much normalization is applied right and these parameters beta and gamma are typically learned as a part of the learning process now the beta and gamma can be initialized here and uh, so can the epsilon so the epsilon is something that's used in the normalization so the normalization process involves subtracting the mean and dividing by the square root of uh, sigma square and a small constant epsilon is typically added as a smoothing factor so you can control this epsilon as well and there are a bunch of other parameters that you can look up right so to summarize we looked at what layer normalization is it was introduced in 2016 uh, and we talked about how layer normalization is different from batch normalization and where it makes sense to use in comparison to batch normalization. And we also looked at how we can use it in the code. Thank you.